um, this broadcast would be very, very uh, effective and it will also bless you. Now, uh, the topic for tonight is African women in the diaspora, how to empower her in a sustainable way. African women in diaspora, how to empower her in a sustainable way. As an introduction, uh, most African women living in the diaspora today still carry a baggage of bondage, suppression and subjugation by their male counterparts. Women mm. in the Western world are, by contrast, free or freer and more autonomous. Thus, the African counterparts still operate under a bondage mentality. So now, they live in the West, they may be physically free and need to be mentally, psychological, emotionally and financially empowered to succeed, just like their white counterparts. To help us discuss how African women in the diaspora can be optimally and sustainably empowered, we have two special women. Actually, these ladies, they, they have been proven to know their stuff and they will surely deliver. So, ladies and gentlemen, please help us receive uh, to the microphone Dr. Molly Mugisha. Dr. Molly, please, can you say hello to your viewers? Hello, viewers. It's such a pleasure to share with you. Thank you, Dr. Morgisha. Thank you so much. And then we have also Miss Caroline Baiha. Miss Caroline, please, can you speak to your your viewers? Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. I'm very pleased uh, to share this program. <laughs> Thank you so much. You are looking so beautiful, are they? Right. So we uh, we recommend that our viewers that you feel free to give us a call on 020-337-4160 or you follow this broadcast online uh, via Facebook right away on Radio Voice of Niger. So you make your comments and pass them over and we will surely, surely give them to our panelists. So ladies, once again, welcome and we apologize for the little technical hitch. Now the first question goes, in which way are African women today in the diaspora disempowered by their marital, cultural, and other backgrounds. What's your intake, Dr. Mugisha? I think uh, most of the disempowerment is, uh, is uh, largely on a mental level, on a mental level and, uh, and based, uh, on belief. based on belief. Because, because most most women, most women can be here with belief here about, with the, belief gender about roles the gender roles for those who are married, for, who example, are married for example what they are supposed what to they do supposed as a woman as married, a woman in, a home, married uh, in a home uh, which is uh, generally which best around generally looking, looking around, after the looking family, after the family and, and less best and around less earning best around income, income for the family for the family because back because in the background in Africa the man is earning the money and the woman is looking after the family. Okay. But when they come but here, when they come uh, here uh, it's based on an equal level, on an equal level. and you find that, you uh, find that uh, in any case, the women any case, are also the women going are out also to earn some out money, out some either money, doing uh, uh, formal uh, or informal uh, work, which earns the money, the but money, it's still and carrying it's still full, carrying burden full burden of looking, after looking after the family, raising the children, raising the children which in any which case, once in any you're case, here, is normally supposed to be shared, because if there is no social structural support, there are no aunties, there are no Grandparents yes. to, help out. to help out. So you find that so you find that, that lies mainly on the woman, on the woman, and combined and with combined the looking for, for, for money, which is also which is supposed, supposed to be shared, to be you shared. find that there is a you bit of a struggle on how to keep struggle the balance, keep and, the balance and, and, and most of it can, result, can in result in stress, and, uh, really, feeling and uh, really feeling alone that you are doing everything alone. And it is made worse in cases where the woman is the, is the one working and the, the husband is not working. And you leave him at home and you come and 
find him. You come and find him and nothing is done. The house is not clean and the food is not cooked and you have to do that yes. as well. So it, it can pose a challenge really. And that is really based on the belief that the women and men's roles are different. In any case, what a man can do in looking after the children, the woman can do as well and vice versa. Wow. wow. Well, this is awesome. So um, some of these factors you've just mentioned now, you are saying to our audience that they are contributing to uh, uh, make the woman uh, not to be uh, empowered. Is that what you are saying? Yes, because when she tries to juggle the two, in the end, uh, one is not fully done either. If she's trying to work, she's not fully exerting herself, so she cannot go further, she cannot go higher. And she also feels the guilt of not being able to fully look after her children. And so she, she feels a little bit disempowered, and sometimes it can lead to confusion of what do I do, should I... Uh, live uh, making an income and just uh, uh, settle with the family or can I do both and it is a bit confusing but also very exhausting for an average African woman who is living in Europe with a family for yes, example. Thank you so much. So um, uh, Miss Caroline please can you uh, can you contribute to this? What's your view please? My view on this issue is uh, first of all we have that cultural barrier you know, uh, when, like uh, Moline said, Dr. Moline said that when uh, when we are in Africa, we have all the help and assistance from the family, and it's easy for us to have a move. Uh, we can we can be more um, active than here, because here in here uh, in, in uh, Netherlands we are taking Netherlands because we are in the Netherlands. Here in Netherlands, it's very difficult for a lady to empower herself, even if she's having a high a skill background. You can have your own uh, your business. You can have your own idea. You can have your your, your your own knowledge and also your own entrepreneurship but it will be very difficult for you to achieve your goal because you have a lot of difficulties you have first children you have the barrier language you have uh, difficulty to find finance you have difficulties to find your way on the entrepreneurship and uh, on your personal development and also cultural uh, psychological uh, um, uh, way and there is also the fact that uh, most of the women who are coming here, they are not coming here with the idea to improve themselves. You can, you have like a five to ten percent of women, like uh, Dr. Maureen and other women in the diaspora, which are very tackled the problem to try to implement uh, uh, their knowledge, to try to implement implement their businesses without uh, having the help and the assistance from the from the government, because Netherlands government do not give us so much um, uh, uh, support. Uh, uh, when we are coming uh, with a very great idea and uh, the, the, there is also uh, such the, the barrier of um, uh, uh, being alone or married you know when you are married you have assistance and uh, uh, if you are living alone with children you are facing sorry for the world you are facing hell you pull the tail of the devil to try to move forward so then for me it's very difficult for for african lady in the in the netherlands and in eu to try to, to reach their goal and to empower themselves. Well, you, you can say that again. You can say the EU because you are an EU representative. But if I may ask you, Miss Caroline, um, uh, are you now trying to say that um, women, or are you assuming that uh, ladies who are, who are in our home countries are more empowered than those who are in the diaspora? Of course, of course. Because you, you, because you made, you made mention, you made mention here that um, the Netherlands government is not supporting, and also EU, or uh, they are not really like empowering women because of some of the uh, barriers, like the language barrier, financial barrier, and and uh, and uh, maybe cultural barrier as well. But then, then I begin to assume: Are you trying to say now that those at home in our home countries? Ladies like us in our home countries are more empowered than those of us in the diaspora. Of course, 
How? How? Because, like, I say it clearly. I say it clearly. We are very empowered, but the only thing in Africa, we don't have uh, the means, the financial means. So for some, for some of us as a woman, we don't have the fire, the finance, financial means. If we had that financial means, what are we doing here? I used to say that women in Africa, they are very well empowered intellectually. They are very empowered. They have a good idea. They have a support. They can, they can they can go they can be a very good leader tomorrow you know and they are good leader because like i used to say women are the minister of interior you know, of their household so in africa we are empowered but we lack finance we lack some new technology and when we have all those points which are not in our uh, uh, now uh, uh, our they are coming but uh, if we have this tools in africa i don't know what we are doing here in europe we are going back wow we are, we are, we are going back and we can do better we can read we can raise uh, our family we can raise our continent and we can raise our uh, our, our, our nation so what is important for us is that i call all the women i used to call women that don't stay still at home and start start thinking and start crying and start uh, uh, getting depressed come out with your idea mm -hmm. Meet, meet. We need to meet the diaspora women. Need to meet to share our ideas together and to try to fight for our right and also our interest and benefits to return back home because we are not going to stay here. One of these days we will go back with knowledge. We are here in Western world to yes, acquire yes, acquire knowledge and after return it back home and to distribute that knowledge. <laughs> This is what we we are. So doing. are you not this saying that my, there's already? Are you saying fight. that there's already money so there for us? Uh, because uh, there's money now in 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 our home countries that we can use to embark on this knowledge we have acquired. Because by the way, it's because of money that's why most of us left and we came here. So uh, the the economy we left have even become worse than what we 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 had before. Do you understand? So now we have acquired the knowledge. But the financial means may not still be there. What do you want to say, uh, Dr. Mugisha? Because I wanted to come to you on your own part. Uh, I was wondering, um, do you think the cultural aspect is contributing to also this lack of empowerment? Because from the marital perspective, what you said, how, we, how women are taking care of the household and at the same time they are uh, meant to work and then uh, contribute effectively, equally, as a matter of fact, in this part of the world. So that is like um, also something that is hindering them from being uh, empowered. Is that? Yes, I think the yes, I think the cultural. I mean, culture transcends everything. Culture affects the way we believe, and we see a lot of differences. For example, culturally, in the way we think about money, how to earn it, and how to spend it. Um, the way we we think about uh, raising a family and childcare, and the way we think about uh, what nature of jobs that we are supposed to be able to do as women. So that is something that is very hard to change because if I believe that certain jobs are not good for me as a woman, even if I'm forced to do them by circumstances, I will be unhappy. So culture transcends everything. And so you find that uh, when you are in a land where people think differently and do things differently, it takes a little bit uh, of creativity on, on our part. We have to really think deeply. If I have my idea, how do I get this idea across? And how do I use this idea to earn me an income, for example, or to get my name out there? So we, we have to be a little bit more creative on how we get it out there, how we support ourselves while we are also trying to get ourselves out there. And that all depends on what you believe. And also, of course, how we go out there to look for knowledge, because some of our women are really very well educated. They have very wonderful ideas, but they don't even know where to start. For example, if I want to look for funding, or if I want to, how do I use this idea and make it a commercial idea? We have to be out there looking for the knowledge and we have
have to be a little bit more creative. Now, people come for all sorts of reasons, and some have intention to go back, and some have intention to stay here. So uh, sometimes we, we live with one foot here because we have the belief that we shall go back, and we have another foot back home because, of course, we live large families there, which is also a cultural thing because you, you find that besides having to support yourself, you also have to support a large extended family on the other side, which could be both on your family and on your husband's family. And you find that the little you have has to really be carefully divided. And uh, I, I always tell women, put your family here first, look after your family here first before you can think of the extended family. But culturally, that seems wrong. Because culturally, we believe you have to look after yes. everybody. You have to pay school fees for everybody who, who, who is dependent on you. It's, it's just our belief that we have to do that. And we're in a society where here everybody takes care of themselves and those who cannot, the government takes care of them. Old people have their pension, but we are tied to a society back home where you look after everybody. So you find that we believe that we have to make lots of money so that we can look after everybody. And in the end, we are frustrated and exhausted that whatever you make goes away. And so you find that it's very hard to get ahead. It's hard to even sit and develop your ideas. Because sometimes you have ideas, but you really need a peace of mind. You need to be sitting down uh, very often and meeting with people who have like mind so that you can develop these ideas and take them to another level. Because that's how society develops. But you find that our category of women, they are all these background factors, most of which are really cultural by who we are. That there is hardly any time to develop any ideas, let alone go look for the funding and even implement them. Because the first and foremost is to earn an income and look after the family. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. Speak, uh, speak, uh, Caroline, please. So it means it means yes. then that the diaspora ladies are really uh, in trouble because it's like um, uh, things th things are not really working the way we had thought. We came for greener pastures, but now it's like more <laughs> more assignment, more 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 is being uh, given unto us. You know. Yes. Double trouble. Double trouble. It's very it's a heavy trouble because uh, yeah. the society now uh, in Netherlands the society do not help us at all. We are we really need to fight and uh, and you know there is also uh, you have to look at uh, another yes. factor factor point you have the diaspora diaspora women who are fighter uh, like Dr. Moulin uh, with integrity dignity and respect of the culture and of a human being and yes. human rights. You have another group of person who are only here uh, to try to fool the society and to try to get the money and do things without respecting the culture, the 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 woman, the, the, uh, the woman uh, right and uh, to to to, bo to be above others. And you have the one who do not have anything, who are in uh, who are at home. They are, they are uh, uh, um, victim, they are, uh, uh, they are abused, they, they, they are the less privileged one who do not have a perspective of life. And this this group is the group that we need, we um, fighter, we need to call them and try to guide them and work together to reach one step to another one because we are we do not have the same ideas of uh, of uh, entrepreneurship we do not have the same idea of uh, 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 family aspect we do not have the same uh, uh, the, the same view on culture on the same belief thank you we do, the religion is also a matter uh, we don't have the same belief so we need to come together the diaspora when i say the diaspora the diaspora always need to come together and try to think, brainstorming again to see how we are going to tackle this issue now because it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse. If we do not wake up now, we are going to sing. And if we see, we don't have any 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 option. And some people may come to depression. Some people may kill themselves. Some people may, may just go back and stay still and uh, 
difficult to return because you know when you do not have any means you don't have money you don't have, have money you don't have perspective you don't have a plan for the future it is difficult for you to even go on holiday to meet your your your, your family and you need to go back you need to go back at least one a year or two times a year back home to 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 take energy exactly exactly because you know, we need to get this energy back home because it's our it's our resources. Hmm. With that, it's like a ba it's like a, a radio. When the battery is empty, you need to refill it, and we are like that. Just for a woman, are very are in need of this refilling. CD. CD. Yes. Yeah, refilling. Yeah, yeah. Because it is very important. Yeah, exactly, but you know, but the fact is that um, as as it may be or it may seem as how um, possible or how important what you said may, may, may sound. Not all the diaspora women have what it takes to go back. Yeah, I so so because I do not want to use the other language. They, so some of them do not really are not in that legal position to, to be able to go back. Okay. Yes, so talking, yes, you are talking. You are talking about. The, I'm the, sorry to cut you. You are talking about undocumented women. We yes, do agree. So they are not. So they are not documented. So undocumented women cannot go out. But we need to create a holiday for them. Even if they cannot go back, we need to take them somewhere, even here in in, in the Netherlands, to take a break. To take a break together. Exactly, and then that that that, that brings me. It is very important yeah, that for them. Brings me to really. Um, of viewing some of the associations, some of the women associations that those these women in the diasporas have managed to form, and uh, and uh, I have really uh, as 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 both of you were speaking, I was just zooming around and zooming around and zooming around. I said, oh, they really have some uh, organizations that they have formed associations just where they can while away some time and where they can meet each other and be happy. <coughs> but then I do not see. A sort of empowerment, as um, uh, Miss Caroline, you are speaking, being uh, be, being being done in those uh, organizations. I see them come together. They wear the same clothes, dress, you know, from head to toe. But I do not see anything more than that. You know, they they they, they dress very very well. I do not see, um, or maybe people who are higher than them, who are coming in to empower them to educate them or to teach them on what they're supposed to know i only see that let, let if they are of if they are of the third category as you mentioned miss caroline they they cluster around yeah. that same category do you understand me yes. i've not yes. i've not really they're seen coming, i've not really coming. seen many diaspora female fora where 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 Really, they come together, and then it is for the sake of empowerment. It is for the sake of you know uh, uh, synergizing and 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 uh, and uh, and uh, building up one another. They, 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 I only see yeah. them in nocturnal activities like parties, parties, parties. But no. is it is uh -huh. it all? Uh, 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 I will cut you short. I will cut you short. If you if you yes. permit me. Uh -huh. Uh, we had, uh, we, had uh, we used to do this uh, Dr. Molin uh, uh, she, 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 she's a member of it in Den Haag we have an organization which is created is a woman platform sub-Sahara woman okay. platform and we do activities and we call the problem is is because it's only on regional you know is this platform is uh, the name is Karibu Bibi is only in uh, uh, Den Haag but I I think we can call, we can call, call, we can call and this uh, is uh, this is something, uh, this is something that we can do. We can call all the women to come to come in Den Haag, and you will see that there is a program. There is a very pro very good program. There is activities. There is a possibilities, but we need to come together. We need to come. Uh, uh, let's say create a community. Very good community with people who are willing to work and people who are respect one another. One another. 
we can make something very great because Dr. Molin can say we did something very great uh, 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 some 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 months ago. She she she's uh, this association is uh, she's having a self a business, but and and we need to improve Dr. Molin business also. You know, so you who as a media, I used to say that the African media are very important to bring the news out. You understand. Is you, is you who can teach like now? You 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 you, you had that beautiful program today uh, uh, about uh, women diaspora, uh, employment of women diaspora. But you don't need to be only on local, or you need to come out and internationally like you do. So if people do not know what and good organization is doing it's normal that you will say you will have that statement that we don't have a, a woman organization who are not doing uh, writing who are dressing and no there is a bet yeah, because to come uh, because uh, if you are saying that you people have something in den haag i mean den haag to amsterdam is not very far and if it is something that is uh, really impacting other diaspora women. Then we're supposed to know about it and it's supposed to be global. We don't need to come over to 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 Den Haag before we participate. I mean okay, so I mean I mean we can reproduce whatever is there. We can reproduce it. Okay, so then what okay, so then what, what what is going to what uh, what is going to do so that uh, Dr. Molina and me uh, we are going to discuss about that issue and we will do something for all the diaspora women who are willing to work together on national level and we can improve uh, 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 you we you we come you we see what we are we, we are doing you know it's from the house uh, the housekeeping to a doctor and uh, to a uh, international organization representative there is a group of women together they are strong. well that is good if there's something like that i want to be representing Amsterdam. Like you, yeah. if there's anything like that yes. i want to be the one Yes. There is, there is, and the media, the media, uh, 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 like you, can improve, can make it happen, and we need to draw a plan and program and uh, 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 organize. It's not every time uh, clothes or uh, high shoes. We do everything. I think Dr. Molin can explain what we did last time: cancer program, a breast program, a human woman rights. Uh, um, a lot was was uh, was there. I'm so surprised. And you guys say you are my friends. I know one of you invited me to any of this. Day. You guys are really funny. You do you see that? This is how we are not working together. I, I will invite you people always on my show, but you are doing something like that. You never even thought about me. It's no, really funny. You see, no, well, no, let's no, go no. to the next uh, discussion. I think what I can say, what I can say about uh, uh, just to add to what Caroline has said. Um, what is hindering the most progress in all these activities and projects? They are they are beautiful projects going on and um, and uh, <clears throat> Apostle Helen. Last time you had one also in Amsterdam area uh, where uh, with the GGD talking about health and you know all these are empowering programs. But what we have still not figured out as uh, as African diaspora women or men for that matter is the realization that knowledge yeah. is power because all these, because all these that. very beautiful programs people hardly come it's true. and, uh, yeah. and uh, it's all prepared and uh, I, I mean for for those who know my my own personal programs yeah. that i make i always ask people to bring a packed lunch and they find that very strange but the reason i do that is that i soon realize that if there was a program where there was going to be a big dinner served or whatever people will come at the very end because they know the talking is finished they can now eat. yes that that is a fact because people come but they are not really interested in the information that is being wow. shared they just know okay we are going to get dinner of course the other things that are also impacting attendance and participation in these mm -hmm. programs are again things like uh, child care and of course most of these programs are normally on weekends because that's the, the free time and some people still have to either look for money on weekends or they have nowhere to leave the kids so i think it's probably going into understanding 
how can we increase participation yes. in these programs? Because for those who come, they get really yes. good knowledge. So, I can cite, because these are normally also a chance to network, to know who is providing what. I can cite, I've got uh, quite a good number of hairstylists from programs like that, and then they are doing my hair. That That's getting their knowledge around and being able to get uh, clients and people who can use their services. But they don't come simply because uh, probably uh, we as organizers of it or we who are trying to move the, the people forward are uh, maybe not understanding what they really need what what do they need to be able to come to this besides the food because the food is always a big attraction but maybe providing childcare for them maybe so I think there is a need even the money that the, the city councils are spending on these programs you see that the return is very small because I've been in Holland for 10 years and I can say honestly and I don't have the statistics on my yeah. fingertips but I see our African society uh, immigrant yes, communities yes. are a little bit worse off today than they were a few years yeah. ago and yet services are improving everything is improving I mean we come here for greener pastures and the pastures are really green but what can we do to, to make use of them and, and be a part of because we are also a little bit out of the society as far as exactly and that is concerned. a problem like that is what line. i'm trying to say here because it's like the, the when you see some of these associations they are only just interested in wearing uh the uniforms which is good anyway but uh, is that all yes. I, I mean being powered by tying headgear what would that make to me how would that bring money if, if I, I go to uh, a seminar and then it's to, to teach me how to tie headgear, how would that, how would that really empower or br bring money to me? Do you understand me? We have to go beyond all of these little, little things and, and really go yeah. deeper. It's good to teach them to make headgear. It's good to you, you wear flamboyant clothes, as many of them are doing. But besides that, there got to be some real knowledge, transfer of knowledge. Transfer of technology, you know, capacity building and all of those things has to, you know, which will mm -hmm. enable an African in the diaspora woman to, even if, even if she finds herself going to Africa, she's not going just empty. There's something that she thinks she has. Yeah. Do you understand me? So yeah. that, that sort of yeah. working yeah. together yeah. and uh, uh, synergizing is what I, 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 I am missing in some of the uh, for, uh, women for that we have here. Mm. I think we shall need, uh, again, and um, I, I do this quite a lot on uh, bringing down the hard facts to people. Um, we cannot really fully use, uh, make use of every, all these resources around us, for example, in the Netherlands, unless we have, first and foremost, a mindset shift. We have to shift our mindset. We have to think differently. If we cannot come from Africa and live in Holland and think like we're in Africa. Yeah, that cannot work. So, so in the end, that's why we remain outside of society. Yes, to be honest, so the, the Dutch the society, the Dutch system and the Dutch uh, government is very, is very welcoming, is very open to ideas, but it has to make sense because you go to ask for, let's say, support for a certain project. We have to show how this project is going to impact yeah. the community. And after we have done that, we have to actually do it because sometimes uh, people go, they get money and they come and do something completely different things that they have nothing to show mm -hmm. for it and after that there is a general exhaustion about helping yes. the community so we have to really have a mindset shift and begin to think differently begin to think long term because we are mainly thinking today and now and so and when we think long term we only think about yeah. going back home but think long term think what our, our what kind of uh, society and community are our own world being our own children going to live in then our our actions can be based on that because we think very short term uh, the little money we get we use it and Carolyn talked about uh, holidays like being able to take just even if to go not you don't even have to leave Holland but just take a break and and, and rest and rethink things and uh, the, the 
government does give money for holidays. It's now May, and uh, people have uh, have received money yeah. for holidays. But that's when they've bought a new TV, <laughs> they've bought a new mobile phone, they've, bought, uh, they've sent some home. And, you know, and then you're thinking, yes, you have done that. You're halfway through the year. By September, you'll be completely exhausted, getting depressed. The winter is coming. You haven't yeah. rested. And society is set up in such a way that you take yes, some breaks. It's true. And the society enables it because they know you will probably use up all the money when they give it to you. They put it aside and they give it to you in May. Go on holiday, you buy an iPhone. We have to shift our mindset It's very, very important. You really made a very strong point because many, many of them really take holiday. Many of them, many of them really go on holiday. Many of them really even go to uh, uh, restaurants to have good time. Many of them. So uh, uh, yes. it, it's, it's something that that mind shift has to be really shifted because it's like to us here yeah, we've come, so we must grab the money. Well, so we do grab it and mm. grab it and grab it and take care of people at home, people at home, people at home without thinking. Or be, without realizing that the more we are working, the more we are being drained. You know, yeah. energy is yeah. leaving you, strength is leaving you, and a time comes when you will not be able to recruit. Do you understand? So, yeah. break is highly yeah. needed. But it's like the uh, the the um, African woman uh, uh, have not yet realized the need even to make provision for break. So if the husband is not talking yes. about it, or if she is single, she's not even thinking about it. When the children remind her yes. of it, she even gets offended. Do you yes. understand? Because yes. she has budgeted that money that have come for something else. So I think it's very important that we have a mind shift to begin to you to begin yes. to not only think about helping those who are at home, but at the same time helping ourselves first, the immediate. Helping the immediate family yes. first be, be in good shape so that you will be able to help those to help the, to the help extended. More. Do you understand? Yes. So I cannot. Yes. But let me yes. let me quickly go to my next question. My next question is: Is there is there a way to easily identify an African woman that have been empowered? I just yes uh, yes. 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 Is there is there yes. any way to yes. identify yes. that yes. African yes. in the diaspora you are, who you have been already, empowered? You already are empowered, Molina. What are, what are the traits? Can you tell us some of the traits? The traits yes. you know, that yes. that people you know, can see and know that this person doesn't have freedom. Listen, when you see a woman who is standing up and talking freely and having a free mind and having a I mean, um, goth to uh, express herself on giving back to the society and accusing, not accusing the society, but calling the society and saying that, hey, what you are doing is not good. And uh, try to give ideas, try to uh, pull other women. You know that this woman, she don't have anything to do. She's really go for it. And she's she's like, um, uh, um, how did you say, the head of the trade. You know, she she's going front, she break the doors uh, and she's carry out the wagon and say, okay, let's go, push it. We have to push. This is the kind of woman which is, uh, uh, she's not afraid of anything and good or not good, she's going for it. There is a lot of women like that in the Netherlands and they call this woman extremist. They call this kind of woman, uh, 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 how it is a word? Feminist. Yes, so you know it is. There is a lot. You see a woman who is coming. She's very well dressed. She's having makeup, but she is having a tab, an iPad, and carry baby, carry laptop, and she, oh, this woman, she's a fighter. When she she set up a, a, a desk, even in meeting. And she's she's trying control she's controlling not trying getting information. You know I I'm I'm taking this example just a little, uh, just an example. Molly last time she she was our MC and she came she came you know she was very nice dresser makeup very nice perfume start pulling us ask a question and say okay you have to present what is the can you she wanted to know everything swallow everything in few seconds few seconds. Yeah. You know, so that is the kind of woman that you see in activities. They are always on the move, like wow, the beast. Wow, you know? really? <laughs> and, and yes, 
I can see there's a fire on these ladies. Really? You feel their power. <laughs> you, 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 you feel I don't know. Molly cannot say no. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So talk talk to me, Dr. Molin. Tell me, tell me more. So some of the threats to to to, to easily identify uh, uh, women in the diaspora who are who have freedom. Well, I've been very well, I've been very fortunate to be uh, somebody that people come to when they are trying to either find their way and uh, not because I'm in any position of uh, of anything, but because they have seen me, they know me, and like Carolyn says, they, 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 they can be sure that I will probably have something to say to help them. And what I have realized is... Um, uh, again, knowing who, who has gotten to a certain level, even mentally empowered, uh, you, you feel the freedom, you feel a bit of freedom as they speak, and, you know, uh, looking at all the choices available to them. So such women are for me always easy to help because, uh, I mean, the kind of things that they are normally wanting to find out is, oh, I am studying this, and do you know any job opportunities? And they are looking specifically in one direction. And then I tell them, have you considered this? Have you considered that? Because we were also raised in a society where you you study uh, medicine, you're yes, a doctor. Exactly. <laughs> you study education, yes, you're a teacher. Things are very yeah. clear cut. And the, the law, you're yes. a lawyer. There are no other things people know. Either you're an engineer, a lawyer, or you know those kinds of things. But when we come here, there is uh, there is lawyers. There is also all sorts of a range of other things. So being able to know them and and also then tell people, oh, you're studying this uh, kind of education, but you can also do this and that and that yeah. and the other. And then you see they open yes. their mind and they feel the freedom yes. to choose. Because I've also had women, sorry about the noise, I've also had women who are, for example, they studied something in their country and then they come here and they're stuck in looking yeah. for that. And when you tell them, but what about when you do this? Like, oh, but you know, then all the time I wasted will be for nothing. I said, no, you got that wow. skill, transfer it to this kind of, of profession. Look at your interests. What are you interested? You're not tied anymore to what you did in Africa. Follow your interests. What are you interested in? What would you like to wake up every yeah. day to do? So when you see a woman who is free to make those decisions, and I've also had some who say, let me go speak with my husband. I don't think he will like it that I do that. Then you see there is still a little bit of bondage and a little bit of hesitation. Okay. You know, she still needs to be almost mentally empowered to believe that she can do anything. She can be anything. And some people, of course, uh, we attach titles, oh, this is an important person because they're doing an important yeah. job. But to be able to free our minds to say, I want to do this because it makes me yeah. happy. Not because my society, how will the people in Africa hear that I'm doing this? That is not freedom. We're here with all these things that we can do, hundreds of professions, I can't even yeah. count them, which are all equally fulfilling, equally rewarding. So I, I tell people, choose based on your passion. What do you want to wake up every day to do? If you like after looking babies, choose that, then go and get better at it, study it and study it until you're better. And when I find a woman who really explores all yes. these options and goes on, I say that that woman is really empowered. She's reached a state because she's only getting better yeah. and better. She's going further yeah. and further because she has no bondage, she has no limitations, and she feels that she can do anything if it but makes her is it her every happy. time that somebody says, baby, those who are married, is it every time that they say, let me inquire from my husband, then does that, does that depict a bondage? Does, is, that, is that a sense of bondage? Uh, uh, if, if I have a good idea, I will come and speak, I will about, come and with speak, and speak about it with my husband. This is just talking about my, my situation. When I'm talking about it with my husband, it's not like I'm asking for his permission okay. to do it. I'm just talking to him as my partner and yes. companion. Maybe he sees another side and, and my husband is always seeing the other side of it. And then in the end, I have a more refined okay. idea. But when, uh, one moment, let me tell the kids to be quiet. You, you, you know, um, to ask an authorization to the to his husband is not a bandage okay. for me. It's, uh, uh, it's uh, like you are complimentary, you know. 
my husband is my backbone. Is my, backbone. My, husband is my husband is my advisor, my is my coach, coach. is my he's coach, my is my yeah. consultant, yeah. is my uh, he is somebody he, that I need. Maybe, uh, my husband, maybe my husband will uh, uh, help me to avoid mistake, you know? Uh, what is, so uh, what is important is that we don't have to look at it as a bondage. We have to look at this. For me, I, I used to say, I said it again, that the woman is the minister of interior and the, presi the, the husband is the yes. president. So that they advise themselves, they, uh, they, 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 how did you say, they, they decide yeah. together, you know, one hand cannot do cannot oh. do anything alone. Anything yes. alone. You need uh, so, the two. So even a uh, single, uh, single woman, they always have somebody uh, male, uh, male, uh, male that they, they will ask. Like, they will ask. Like, like me, I'm a yeah. single woman, but I have my junior brother and my senior brother or my uncle. I always say, hey, I want to do something, but please, as a man, what do you think? Yes. As, as, a, as, yeah, as a, yeah, he's a, sometimes my junior brother is telling me, oh, give me a break. It's a woman thing. I say, yeah, but you are, you are men. So then if you, what do you think? Give me also an idea. So then, you know, it's, it's, um, it's an exchange. It's an exchange. So, Caroline, what I, what I was trying to say when my children interrupted was that, uh, when, where, when I see the bondage is that when the woman is looking at asking for the permission to look at these other options, Mm -hmm. which, is different, which is different from when you're collaborating with your husband, for example, saying, I am having this idea to do this, what do yeah. you think? So uh, you find that uh, quite a number of women, for example, they will say, oh, my husband will not allow me to do something like uh, in this area or in yes. that area or something where I'm traveling this distance from home. And then you find that, of course, that means that she cannot really look after all at all yes. the options, uh, as opposed to where you're discussing with your husband and saying, how will this work out? I mean, for example, sometimes I have to go away to, to be away or sometimes I have to start work at seven. Yeah. And then it's in agreement with, if I have to start work at seven, my husband takes the kids mm -hmm. to school. Sometimes I have to work till later. It's, it's in collaboration. I mean, my job is as important as his job. Maybe he might earn more money, but they are both equally important in the balance of the home and also our own mental yeah. balance. So when it is a partnership, then you see that there is the woman, that woman is empowered to really be, be her best. As opposed to where you can do this you cannot do that you, even if we say i can i, I mean I, I got a job uh, posting in yeah. switzerland and both my husband and i agreed it was not going to work out because we looked at all the options child care this and this and the disruption it makes for the family but it was a mutual agreement it was a mutual decision he it's not that he said no you cannot go because you're the woman and if you're gone what will happen <coughs> Awesome. So, so an, an empowered woman is free to explore all options and come to mutual exactly not the not, not to be tossed around like a yo-yo, you know, like a yo-yo. So uh, they, they cannot make decision of their own. They have to take uh, uh, permission all the time, or they have to get approval. It's good to do to get approval if you have a partner, but then um, yes. that doesn't yes. mean that you just have to totally depend on that person as if you do not have a reasoning of your own. I believe that's what yes. you are saying here. Yes. I believe that's what you are saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what mm -hmm. I'm saying, yes. Wow. All right. But uh, I can I can I can say uh, also, you know, I'm a single woman uh, sometimes. I don't want any advice from anybody. You know, <laughs> this is also empowered woman. You, you, you guys know that I'm, I'm the, I'm the bulldozer. I don't, uh, I don't take, I don't take uh, 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 advice, but I encourage every woman to have that yes. because it's very important. Why I, why I, I want to close uh, that topic on that way is because uh, I'm a mother with two grown-up children, you know, they are old, they are old uh, father and mother now, okay, 16, 20 years, and uh, I'm free. 
I'm free. But there are some women who are young, who are entrepreneurs, they just have a baby and they are single mother. They don't have help, they don't have assistance. So the duty of an empowered woman like us is to come together to assist. Yeah. You know? And 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 uh, what I would like to say that as a, uh, as a um, diaspora woman, it is important for us now to move together to implement entrepreneurship. You know, in every level of entrepreneurship, because it has not been done in the Netherlands. Women are still in standby. And we don't have, we don't, we have ideas, we have knowledge, we have, knowledge, we have capacity, we have capacity mm. and, uh, mm. and uh, we, uh, we, uh, we don't have the tools, we have the tools, but we don't have, uh, 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 how did you say, the, the, the initiative, the initiative. Right. and now I think we need to take the initiative. Really? Mm. Yes. Is there any yes. reason for that, Caroline? I think, uh, I, think uh, I don't know if Caroline is over. I think it's the limitations that we feel. And uh, sometimes, and, uh, sometimes you, you have been, uh, you, know, told you know, told what you can do and what you cannot do, just also when we were growing up. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, hello. Sorry. It's all right. Yes. Sorry, technology. Sorry, technology. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I was saying, uh, the, uh, uh, I stepped in to answer the question in the meantime. I think it's the, the reason we don't take initiative is the, the limitation that we feel. We feel uh, when you have been told you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do that. And then we get to a... We feel like we cannot get anywhere. So we don't take the step. And also not having the knowledge... Some people, when you tell them, oh, this is available for you, just not having the knowledge of, having the knowledge of mm -hmm. where to start. So, and, and, for, so, me, and, and for me, I think this is solved by, for us, going, by, out, for us going yeah. out more, stepping out of our, stepping out of our stepping comfort zone, stepping out of our houses. If there is an, uh, uh, something going on, go there, talk mm -hmm. to people, just hear what, just hear what other, people other people are doing. Sometimes you think, oh, oh this cannot be a business idea. idea. And then you step somebody, out and you see somebody is making good money exactly. out of it, but you, you, you didn't think it could be done. And I think every person, every woman needs, uh, also men, of course, needs a kind of a kind of coach or a mentor. I may say somebody who you can look up to, somebody who is somewhere where you want to get and where you're aspiring to be. And we need to do this and also at an early age connect our children to the people who are where they want to be. So that they have this uh, this guidance, this career guidance, this life guidance, because we cannot do it How alone. Do we? And and for me, I, I must say, I've benefited from a good number of coaches, a good, a good number of mentors. Yes. And I will go to them, I'll speak with them, I'll have them challenge me and push me to the limit. And uh, if I don't make it, I know that I didn't make it because I just had this and that, but it will not be because I didn't know what I was supposed yes, to do. Yes, you are fortunate, and also because of your level of exposure and education. But there are also others in the, in the third category, which uh, one of you made mention about, the, 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 the least category of the women who are in the diaspora who may not even may have had enough education, but they are here, you know, but they are here. Mm. So I, I go about wondering how we can do things that can benefit them because those people, the level of our discussion now may be too high for them. Do you understand? I, I think we, we, we have a very big role to play as some of us who have realized that we need to get this done. And uh, basically, is sometimes you have to take it one woman at a time. When we, meet these people, when we meet these people, we meet these people everywhere. They are cleaning our houses, they are doing our hair, they are looking after yes, our children. Yes. I always like to talk to them one on one. Like, what what do you what yeah. do you do? And when they tell me, what do you want to do? What do you wish you could be doing? And then you see a, a little bit of a pause. Like, uh, I wish I could do this, but and then you know, I'm normally one by one, and there is no but. <laughs> if you wish you could do this, make a plan. Now you have to clean the houses because you, this is to get the immediate yeah. money. But are you taking the Dutch course? Are you 
seeking help where you need to because the help is there. It's just that they feel like I can't do anything. So for me, it's taking it one woman at a time and wherever because I meet them yeah. every day. And when we have these uh, uh, kind of uh, organizations which are doing programs, is to personally tell them, please go. I know you have a lot to do on Saturday, but there's this program. Please go. You will meet people. You will see things. Take your children with you. So I, 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 I'm really thinking if a good number of people were doing this really one woman at a time and going out there and just talking to these women face yeah. to face and showing them that of course it's possible. I have an example of a lady who normally comes to do my hair and then I realize she's very cheap. She charges almost half what the standard yeah. price is. And, and because for her she sees this as extra money because she has a cleaning yeah. job and she feels that she she's not in a big saloon so she cannot charge yeah. big money so it's it's been two years you know when i've known her and uh, so i tell her you know what why don't you do this on a regular basis and reduce your cleaning hours and in, in now she has in her house she has a, a small corner where she does have yeah. her hair and the people come and she'll do their hair and yes she still does cleaning but now she's been able to bring her kids from awesome. africa and she's now you know you see that she's making progress in the two years but it's because i keep at it i say she said but how do i find the clients i say when when you do somebody's hair tell them to get you someone else and myself if i have people who have kids who have to do hair i'll bring to you and myself i'll tell people to yes. come to you now she's more confident because before she feels i cannot charge yeah. very much this is just a side job but she was a professional hairstylist in really? africa and then she's thinking i cannot make a shop i cannot make a saloon but yes you advise people about their hair you know you get good value for it so it's one woman at a time giving them the yeah. confidence that you know this skill that you have you can do something yes. with it let this cleaning house be in the meantime but plan maybe you want to start your salary if i if i if i may come uh, yes. Maureen, there is also something very important that yeah. you say most of the women are doing house cleaning as uh, uh as, as a job you know there's a job but they can create their own job legally is right you just go to register as a cleaner personal cleaner you pay your tax you do the same the same for the hairdresser you are doing uh, you can register as a services yes. you know how to clean the house you know how to do hairdresser you know how to do baby at the end of the day you realize that Oh, I have my own business yeah. with my basic knowledge. Yeah, it's true. Yes. And you pay tax. And from there, step by step, you will see that, oh, you are driving Mercedes, you are building house, you are traveling. This is what I say that it is very important for us to come together and show the entrepreneurship. It's not only to have a big building. It's not only to have a, 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 a big company. It's to have your skill little I little is yes, to something. put it yes. on yes. yes to put it on the and table and somebody special we say uh, we help you we guide you on your right on your administration on your bookkeeping on, together we can help ourselves awesome it's not everybody who is a phd or doctors or international representative or what was little house cleaner babysitter dresser uh, even garden uh, 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 there are some people who are babysitting cats dogs you can create your own business on yeah, that based on your interest based on your interest, based on your interest and based yeah. on your skill and your nobody knowledge nobody will stop you you can start like n mansa one month yeah but when you start mm. you so, also have to consider the balance and the tax system which also is very very high because you only have one year to stay without taxes this is what this is what you are this is what you are you you are you you, you we mistake every time people say oh i'm afraid to but you know that until you get you get your benefit that is from there you have to pay that the profit yeah when you I, make I want to give a personal experience about well let me just use this minute business. just hold on just hold on doctor please hold on please if you are watching this program mm. and you feel like giving us a call or you want to make contribution please give us a call on 020 3374 160 some of you have been reacting on the facebook please just continue to listen and um 
when you feel like uh, calling the studio line, please just go ahead and do it. Our lines are open. All right, doctor. Yeah. Yes. It's, uh, it's, it's, a uh, it's, it's a little bit of a misunderstanding about how the tax works. The tax actually works to the benefit of a small business owner. What happens, what people don't understand, they are thinking, oh, the little profit I'll make, I'll have to yeah. pay it tax. No. What happens is when you are a registered business owner, whether you're babysitting cats or doing yeah. hair, you have expenses that you use anyway when you're not having a business. For example, your phone bill. Yes. Every month you pay phone bill. But if you're a registered business, the cost of your phone and the bill of your phone is tax deductible. So it means you declare this is how much I pay because you have to call clients. Yeah. And so that is, uh, you put it under the yeah. taxes. Any BTV or anything paid to it will be refunded back to wow. you. And then things like transport, your OV card, because you have to go yeah. to clients. That you are in the in, those are expenses you're yeah. incurring. Sometimes you have to have a, a meal, a cup of tea with a client. Maybe you go to to the city and have a cup of tea. All that you just most people at the end of the year they are saying, oh, the tax office wants money back because they didn't record all those things. They didn't declare them as tax uh, as business expenses. Your internet in the home which you use even if you don't have a business and you pay for it but if you have a business your internet in the home the laptop that you buy everything is all tax deductible until the government has taken off the cost of all those things they'll not charge you tax awesome unless you're making a very big profit so people don't understand and so they are more afraid of i'm going to pay tax the only reason that you'll end up paying more than you and is because you didn't do your bookkeeping properly so they only see the money that is coming in, but they don't see what you're spending. So I tell people, if you go to the market and buy hair, you're going to do someone else's hair. Keep okay. the receipt. Because at the end, you will put it all in. The government will take all that off first. And normally after they take it off, you find that you have maybe less than 5,000 euros. They will not tax all that. Right. Most likely, if you have a business and you've done your big books properly, the government gives you money back at the end of wow. the year. Wow, thank you so much. Uh, I, uh, for the sake of our time now, because we have just five minutes to round up, may I ask you, um, do our women sincerely have a fair chance of becoming empowered in a self-sustaining uh, way in this present era? Yes. Right? Absolutely. Yes. Okay, Absolutely. just uh, then talk to us on that briefly and then let's round up. Molly? Molly? I will say that, will say that woman, if you are a woman and you're living in Holland, you're living in Holland for example, or anywhere in, or anywhere in Europe, you have the best chance, have the best in, the chance in the world, even a better chance, than, a better chance than a woman living in America, to be empowered. To be empowered. Because the pasture is so green here, there is so much you can do. There is all the, seriously, there is all the social support. There is child care available. There are all the refunds that you get for using child care. Only if you're working or if you're studying. There is courses to study. The only thing that you have to do is, number one, open your mind. Open your mind to the possibilities. Number two, be out there. There are all these, don't use childcare as an excuse, oh, I have children. There are all these things where you, you have a, a availability for children, activities for children. Go there, learn something. Number three, your mind has to shift. You have to think different. You have to think like you are living in Europe where everything is possible. Number four, you have to get out there and seek the knowledge and educate yourself. Read books about things that you're interested in. Read books about personal development. Look out for seminars going on about personal development and go there. Number four, understand that the men might not move as fast as we do in changing mindset. So if you have a husband or a partner who is still stuck in the mindset of Africa, then you, know you have then you know you have to be patient with them, but also educate them because, they, they, because they, they suffer the most, actually. So we have all this chance to be empowered. We have a very, very good possibility, and there is nothing to stop us, only ourselves. Wow. Awesome, Dr. Bogisha. I'm so impressed the way you marshal the point. 
Uh, what, are, what do you have to say, Miss Caroline? Uh, I don't have much to say, but uh, to, to complete what Molin said is, uh, I would say to all the diaspora, diaspora yes. women, you need to learn about your rights. Hmm. You need uh, to learn about uh, the rights of your children. You need to integrate the Dutch society by learning their language, even if it's difficult. Try and you really need to um, go out there and try to look what you can do. Yes. You understand? And something very important don't change your culture. Respect your culture, respect where you are coming from, and respect where you stay. Respect the law, and you will see everything will come to you when you are open. Like Molin say, when your mindset was wow. there. Mind can, can change, but very long. We take long time. Never forget our culture. We are from a continent. We live in somebody else's country. We need to respect their rights. <laughs> and we need, they need, they respect our rights also. So the balance, yes, the balance, you know me, I'm very straightforward. I cannot give left and uh, leave right. You really need to stay who you are. Don't change because of somebody else. Be yourself. So. Thank you. I have to, thank you. I have to go because I well, have to that is it right <laughs> now. And uh, we thank you as well, those of us, those of you who have listened to us. It has been a very wonderful interview with uh, Miss Caroline uh, Bahia, who is uh, a social activist uh, born uh, in Sweden uh, with uh, a French father. That is why he uh, asked Switzerland. 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 That's why yeah, her accent is the way it is, and uh, we are proud of her. And uh, uh, and uh, and uh, with uh, Dr. Mogisha, who is also our own. So we thank you for listening, and uh, we thank you, ladies, for being with us and having empowered our our women in the diaspora. We hope that um, they will take some of these tips and make use of them. Thank you so much for being You're with welcome. us. You're welcome. And uh, we hope to have you again and again. Well, 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 Dr. Mugisha, you're also a care, your, your business uh, name is, um, can you please? Molly yeah, I know, Molly Cares. Well, that is into wellness, is that? Yes. All right. Yes. So that those. I'm currently writing, I'm currently writing my book on eating for mm -hmm. wellness. So, it, it, so it, 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 I'm expecting it to be out by the end of the year and I really give all the tips that I've been giving in the seminars because I believe if you're not well, nothing goes well. It's true, it's true, it's true. Yes. Thank you so much for being with us and God bless you all. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Bye.